Hello everyone and welcome to Team WSF Dish with Pepper. My name is Pepper Persley and I'm super excited to be here today with Ajay Wilson who is going to run the 800 in the Olympics this year. Um, so hi Ajay, I'm super excited to have you here and yeah, let's get started. So um, let's just start from the beginning. I know your mom and dad ran track, so can you just talk about growing up around track and how you fell in love with the sport? Yes, both of my parents ran track. My dad was a sprinter, my mom was a hurdler and high jumper. Sometimes she did the 800, but um, growing up, we'd always stack up chairs in the living room and she'd teach us how to hurdle from door to window. And we play like fake high jump on her bed, stack up pillows. So we were always connected to the sport, but I didn't actually start running until I was around 10 years old. My younger sister, Brietta, she started running first and she'd come home and tell me how awesome it was. And so I followed in her footsteps and I started track as well. And I fell in love with it. That's an amazing story. So what does it mean to you to be an Olympian, especially after everything that happened last year with the pandemic? It's super special to make this Olympic team. It's been a, a long year for all of us. And so to come out of that race, top three and solidify my spot was, was super special. So many hardworking and just like talented women were also competing for that that opportunity so the fact that I was able to you know get top three meant the world to me. I know every race on the track is different so do you have any um, special strategy for running the 800 and does the strategy ever change? Yeah it's funny because usually not like you said one race is, is like the others I kind of just go into it with the game plan um, just about how I want to feel each like 200 is kind of how I break up the race. So the first 200, I just want to make sure I get out. The second, I want to be comfortable. The third, I want to just start being mindful of where everyone is. And then the last 200 is like kick to the end. So sometimes things can, you know, get wonky in between, whether it's with positioning or going out too hard or going out too slow. But the framework is, is kind of that initial plan of like, this is what your goal is. And you know, roll with the punches and just try and figure it out. And then what was your first thought um, you had when you qualified for the U.S. team again? Yeah, my first thought was, oh my gosh, like, how did that happen? At the top of the turn, I was in sixth place and I couldn't find an opening to just like kick and I, it wasn't looking good. So when we came off the top of the turn and I found some space and I was able to dig deep, I was, I was more shocked than anything. Like, wow, that actually worked. <laughs> um, well, I'm glad it did. Just talk about the, qualifi the qualifying um, process for the 800 leading up to the Olympics. So the qualifying um, was a little bit different this year just because there was a long stretch of when people raced. So from 2019 until I think maybe like the week before trials, um, everyone had an opportunity to run the standard. If you ran the standard, you got to come to trials and then we all had to run three rounds. And at the end of the three rounds, whoever placed top three got to go to Tokyo. That's really interesting. And then what does a typical day look like for you preparing and training for the Olympics? Yeah, it depends on the given day. So today is actually one of my easier days. So I just have a 25 minute run really just light. I had a hard workout yesterday. So um, it generally just be waking up, getting some breakfast, hidden training. Usually I go around 10 o'clock. I'm back home by one. And then it's kind of just like managing, taking a nap. It's, it's refueling. It's um, maybe getting any treatment or massage work that I might need. And then the rest of my days are pretty free. So I always laugh when people are like, oh my gosh, it must be super hard to you know, be a professional athlete. And it is, but if you really think about it, it's really only like four hard hours of the day. And then the rest is kind of a little more chill. All right. I'm glad you have some chill time. Um, and so you have like a hard workout day and then you have more of like a chill day and it goes like every other like that? So not usually. So if we're getting ready for a major championship, so for example, at the trials where our rounds go, one day hard, one day hard, you get a day break, and then you have the final. So sometimes our training will simulate that type of stress on your body. So we'll train hard two days in a row, we'll get an easier day, 
and then we'll come back on the fourth day for another hard day. That makes sense, just to make sure that you don't get any injuries, because that would be terrible. Um, so what's your like pre-race routine? Are there any things you have to do, music you listen to, or traditions you have before you get on the track? Yes, I, I try to keep them to a minimum, just because sometimes our meets are uh, unpredictable, like they're overseas. So I never want to have too many superstitions that if it doesn't go my way, I just completely lose it. But some things that are constant are as I'm getting ready, I play I Was Here by Beyonce. She's my favorite. So that's my go to motivation, just getting ready song. Um, and then when I get to the track, right before I warm up, I'll take like a 20, 25 minute nap. And then I wake up feeling fresh, ready to go. And those are probably my only two um, like routines that I, that I do before I race. All right. I like those music and naps essential. Um, so my dad ran track in high school and he talked about how he sees me running the 800. So what are some of the traits you think that define someone who runs the 800? Well, do you play any other sports? Do you play soccer? Um, yeah, I play soccer. I play basketball, um, softball, and I do Taekwondo, though that's not as much related. Oh, wow. You're just an all-around athlete. <laughs> um, but I know for me, and I know a lot of other uh, successful like middle distance runners, they all had kind of like a soccer base, and they played midfield. So I think if you have that engine um, of just being able to be endurant, and I'm sure that you have it too, because you're a multi-sport athlete. <laughs> there's, yeah. some, there's some true athleticism that comes with that. Um, and then just a little bit of speed. The 800 is also one of those races where um, you don't have to be super fast and you don't have to be super endurant. So if you're somewhere in the middle, I feel like that's usually a sweet spot to be a hundred meter runner. Yeah. It does, if you start trying to sprint from the beginning, the whole way through, you're going to end up winded like before you get to like 10 seconds of running. So, I mean, yeah, definitely right about that. And I actually play defender in soccer, but Maybe I'll, I'll see if I can have my coach put me in midfielder so I can get a sense for what you were saying. Um, uh, what does an organization like the Women's Sports Foundation and the work that they do mean to you? WSF is as an organization that I've heard about for a while, but I didn't really get connected until the last few years. Um, I went to their annual meeting two years ago, and it was just incredible to be around so many other positive, accomplished, and just hardworking women it was inspiring and I think that's that's the the biggest piece that I take away is that um, the organization is an inspiration and so being a part of it I'm able to kind of take on that role as well for those who are in the generations coming up. I love that so much um, so who are some of your heroes or people who inspire you? I'd say my number one is probably my mom. I know that's kind of cliche, but <laughs> whether it's on the track, just with, you know, the career she had or off, but just guiding me through life, she's she's easily my my top role model and someone that I look up to for inspiration in, in everything that I do. Um, in my sport, I'm a huge Allison Felix fan, I'm a huge Corey Carter fan. She's my best friend. Um, and across other sports, I just love super... Um, amazing, powerful, confident women, Clarissa Shields. I got to meet her at the WSF meeting a few years ago, and it was just like incredible. I stalk her on IG now. So I'm, I'm a super huge fan of, of, you know, all the female athletes out there who are paving the way and who also are just like inspiration in, in what they do. I don't think um, being inspired by your mom is cliche. I'm inspired by my mom, and I'm sure that there are other incredible female athletes who are as well. Um, and so last question for you, just what advice do you have for young athletes who dream of being an Olympian like you? Uh, my advice is to dream big. I feel like that's um, something that I had to kind of learn how to lean into. In high school, I didn't really have the confidence that I do now and I didn't push myself as much as I do now because I was unsure and looking back and even as I progress now that's something that I think is key to just believing in yourself dreaming big and really going after what you want hard 
I love that so much. As a young athlete, confidence is always a little bit of a struggle. So thank you for saying that and for that advice. And yeah, that's all for today. Thank you, Ajay, so much. And good luck, good luck in Tokyo. Thank you, Pepper. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you.